All right, welcome back, guys. Welcome to lesson three of section number two. This is where we stopped in the last lesson. This is where we uh, made the task card and we moved it to its own file. And you can see that here. So we have this task card and it's now rendering from a separate file, which is this file. Now, what I want to do in this lesson is actually prepare that task card to render different uh, tasks and different lists. Uh, and to do that, we have to convert that task card instead of hard coding stuff like that. We have to start using um, things that will be passed in props. All right, so before we jump into it, you can uh, open up Get Kraken. Like I said before, you right click on Start of Lesson 3 and check out this commit. This is where we are, and this is where I am right now. And you will be looking at the same exact code, which is awesome. All right, so for this, what I want to do is, first of all, I need this to be uh, something, a variable called title, oopsie, a variable called title in this case which is going to come from props and uh, chores is going to be a category so we can replace that also with category Cate category all right cool and we can remove all of this here and we can simply just replace that with details so these are the th oopsie what's going on vs code details so these are the three essential uh, prop types that we have to use or props in this case that we have to use with um, with the task card component. And the first thing I want to do here is actually declare the types of these props. So I want to say that task card props interface will have title. So title is going to be a string. That's uh, good to go. And category is also a string. That's good to go. And description or details. Yep, details is right. Details is also going to be a string. Alrighty. Now what's happening here is that we are using the interface and the interface here is a way of telling TypeScript mm -hmm. basically what are the types of uh, the props that we're passing into our functional component. So uh, like if you haven't used TypeScript before, this is just a very simple kind of like an addition to your code that tells TypeScript at compiling time that uh, title has to be a string, category has to be a string, and details has to be a string, and so on. Okay, now I want to be able to use these inside of uh, the component. So what I will do here, I will do a little bit of destructuring just because it's a habit. So this is supposedly uh, slightly faster uh, when it comes to uh, performance. Um, so instead of typing here props, Props dot title props dot props dot props dot. So you can just destructure props here as an object, and you can use whatever you get from that destructuring, which is title, category, and details. And you are met with a very uh, beautiful uh, error here. So what is going on here? Let me explain. So what's happening here is that we are using TypeScript, and we are doing everything in TypeScript. All the code that we write is actually in TypeScript. Now that code will uh, be compiled to a JavaScript code that will be kind of like this is our um, our React code that will actually be be compiled and be running on um, on the client side, all right? Good. Now, what we are doing is we are checking for types on compiling side, which is coming from TypeScript. At the same time, React itself has a way of checking for, with, for types, which in this case is um, uh, called prop validation, which is the React prop types. So prop types here is part of React that will ask you uh, to make sure that you declare what are the prop types. And this is a check that will happen at the runtime. So that happens on React side. So you compile your code from TypeScript to JavaScript, and then JavaScript itself, which is your main React code that runs on the client side, is actually checking for prop types. Now, there's kind of like no specific reason. I have seen uh, some guys online saying that it is actually recommended that you use both, that you actually use, where is he? Yep, this awesome guy. He's saying that you have to use both. So you, types are only build time. That's what I just explained when it comes to TypeScript. But prop types happens at runtime. And he's suggesting that you use both. Now, 
this might be really relevant for a really big project, but I don't think it's really like yeah, it's really concerning uh, in a very small project like this. And also, uh, this is the rule that controls the prop types from the ESLint. So if you go back to that error, you will see that this is an error that's coming from ESLint, and this is React prop types, and this is a documentation for that rule. And again, it's a very simple rule that says we need to write a prop type validation in a React component. And the way you would fix this is either doing two things. You could do, you could do task card dot prop types uh, equals an object, and then you could write down here title equal prop types prop types, which we don't have. We have to import dot string dot is required. Is I think it's like that. Is required. Yep. I think so, but then the issue is that we don't have prop types, prop types is not known, and then you would have to import it from React uh, or import it from its own uh, NPM module. Now, I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, I don't think uh, it's worth doing that at this point. I just wanted to explain to you what is actually going on and why we're getting this error. So there are two things that we can do here to kind of like combat this error. First is we can pass in that uh, prop type interface that we have here into the props object here. And keep in mind that what's going on here is that task card as a, um, as a variable, type of that task card is a React uh, stateless functional component, and it's passing in an interface called task card props, right? But we are not actually using that inside here, and that's why um, ESLint says, okay, you're not really giving me the proper type validation for these variables that are props, and you have to do that. So what we are doing here, uh, instead of just passing in that task card props into the React functional component, a stateless functional component, sorry, what I'll do here is I'm going to pass that also into props. So now TypeScript knows that props is of this type and we take it out here and you have now also satisfied, sorry, and now you have also satisfied ESLint by telling it what are the types of the props. So that 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 is for me is is a good fix. You could also disable that rule. So you could also go to ESLint file here and you could disable that rule by writing react slash prop dash dash types and then you could disable that rule by writing off here. If you save this right now, you go back here, this should be gone, I believe. What's the name of the rule again? React dash prop types. Let me just copy this. I might have not done it properly. Oopsie, I just <laughs> missed the colon. Okay. So go back here and there is no error anymore. Now, I do not want to silence this error. I think it's a good idea to make sure that everything in your project is actually typed. So you should get into the habit of that, whether the project is big or small. Just make sure that you pass that interface that you've done here to the variable props, which you have made it for. And you're good to go, no errors, everything's fine. That is very, very good. What's gonna happen now is that we are gonna get an error here because it's telling me, okay, you have declared that task card has these kind of props, but you're not actually passing these props, which is really bad. So let's do that. So let's do title equals by, by milk. And let's do category, yep, equals, um, in this case, it's chores we said, yep. Just put it like that, or chores or shopping, whatever you want to do. And we can give it details as well. And in details, what we will do is I think it will be a good idea to give the same thing again. Actually, no, it's okay. Let's pass it on for now. So what we will do here is basically write uh, buy two liter lactose free milk. And I'm going to pass in that milk, oopsie, that milk emoji which is not really optimal because we are not wrapping into a span, but it's now actually a string, so it should be all right for now. Okay, good. So that is good. I'm not actually running the server. No, I am, which is great. So let's check it out. So if you go here and you refresh, there's actually absolutely no change. The only change that's happened here is right now, we are actually rendering, um, we are actually rendering things here using title, category, and details, and so on. Now, why is that important? The most important part here, or why we did that, is because I wanna actually be able to use that task card um, 
and kind of like map it over an array and it will give me all uh, the task cards, the cards for different tasks. And to do that, the first thing I need is actually an array of tasks. So let's do that, right? So I will just declare here a piece of state that is going to be an array of tasks. So if to do that, let's just do const, let's call this task list, yep, and set task, oopsie, set task, yep, set task list. And this is going to use state from React, of course, and it's going to be an array. It's going to be an array, and inside this array, we will have all of our tasks. And I'm going to just write down a couple of, uh, maybe like two or three tasks right away. So the first, oops, you know, I don't like this, so let's do it that way. Yep. So these tasks, now imagine that you have this array and you have tasks inside there, and you need to keep track. This is going to be like kind of your database, right? It's where you store your state in your app. And this can be coming from the database later. It can be something that you only have it locally, whatever you want to do. But for now, I'm just kind of like mocking a result that we would get from an API request um, or from a database request. So we can develop our UI and then later we can take that and figure out our endpoint and so on. Now, the first thing that you, you have to understand is that when you get all these things from the API or from the database, they will have different details to them. So they are not only going to have the title uh, and the category and details, they will also have other meta stuff. So I need to be able to track what is the status of each, uh, get, uh, of each task, and I also need an ID for each task. So let's do that, right? So let's first of all declare an ID. So each task has to have an ID, and that ID is going to be a random number. So I'm going to write this one liner that is going to give me a random number, math.random, and then you multiply that by a hundred. So now, oh, yep, you get a random number, uh, which is like between zero to one, and you multiply that by a hundred, and you make sure you round that up, you round that up to a zero. So that means you're gonna get a random integer between zero and a hundred. So that's good. So now we can keep track of each uh, ID. We have an ID for each task, so we can use that as the key when we map over the array, and we can actually use that to track which task is going where. And we will also be using that to uh, make sure that we change this task to be like done or work in progress whatsoever. Speaking of done or work in progress whatsoever, we also need another thing here to track the status. status. Yep, if I can type it, yep. Status. So in this case, we're going to put all the tasks to be work in progress. Again, this is where you will track literally the status of your task, whether it's work in progress, whether it's done or whatsoever. And you remember our UI here, we are saying we have some tasks that are work in progress and some tasks that are done. All righty, good. Now, after that, we can just have our, uh, our normal stuff. So we can have, oops, see what is going on. We can have title here, which is going to be by milk in this case. And uh, we can have category, oopsie, category, yep, category. Again, this is going to be chores, yep. And the last one is going to be details. Details in this case is going to be the same thing we have right there. So I'm just actually going to, nope, we can just copy this string from here to here. And that is going to be our first task. Now I have also a couple of two other tasks that I'm going to copy and paste from somewhere because this is just no brainer. So, uh, yep, so this is the same as this task. So let me just copy another one. Yes, I have a list of a lot of tasks here. So let's copy that and let's just remove this uh, dangling underscore. It's just like, yeah, it's not a good practice. So forget about it. All right, cool. So right now we have uh, buy milk. We also have um, we also have buy dog food, and we also have renew gym membership. Okay, good. So the only problem here is that we don't have use state. So I'm going to um, press command and dot, or I think on Windows it's also a control and dot. So you just uh, import use state here from React. Happy days. And what I will do here is instead of using task card on its own like this, what I will do right now is some uh, array magic. So I am going to delete all this. And what I will do here is I will do, I'll say something like, okay, take the task list array and uh, map over that array 
No, uh, first of all, you need to filter that array for tasks that are work in progress. So let's do filter. So when you use filter, you have to pass a function that is going to be applied to each item in the array and only if um, the I only if the item passes the test in that function, that will be passed as a yes returned from that filter function. So what happened here is we were going to say, okay, take the task and take the i, which is going to be each element in the task list. So we have a task and we have the i, which is going to be the index of the task. I just wanna, this is just a very generic thing. You really, I'm not gonna probably, not gonna be using the i. I just like, yeah, this is what comes when you do the filter. You have two things for each element. You have the element itself and you have the index of the element. And what I will do is I will test if the task.status equals 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 work in progress. So this statement will return an array um, that will only return the task that will meet this criteria, which is the task that has to be work in progress. Now, I'm going to take that resulting array and I'm going to map it again. Uh, I'm going to map that small array. I'm going to map it across the comp our component, which is task list. And again, it's the same thing here. I'm going to use task and I. This is just um, super standard thingy. And what will happen here is I'm going to directly return. And what I will return is actually task card, is actually task, task card. <laughs> All right, cool, is actually task card. And I have to use those uh, props. So title is going to be task, which is a singular task that's coming from the map. Oopsie, that's not a string. So that is going to be task, task dot uh, title, all righty, good. And category is going to be task dot category. Uh-huh. And then details is also going to be uh, task dot task dot details task.details, and just to make sure that React doesn't get confused, we need to give this guy a key. And for this, what I will do is actually going to use the task.id, uh, which is the ID, and then I'm going to turn that into a string. So take that ID, which is actually a number. If you remember, it's actually an integer right there. So I'm gonna turn that into a string. Okay, if I save this, it's gonna be get like uh, kind of uh, formatted and looks good, and now I get this is really really good but we have issues with some styling here so let me fix those styling issues right now okay so let's fix this issue very easily and that we can do by making sure that this box here has a margin in the y-axis of say 3 which is going to be 3 times 4 is 12 pixels so that will give it like that a little bit of separation right there I also don't like that everything here is actually chores so what I will do is I will go back here and make sure that some of these are actually, I don't know, maybe, let's try, this is what, this is, let's just do this as shopping and keep this as chores and keep this, uh, change this also to shopping. Okay, good. I also want to add a little bit of flair to that task card. So the way I will do this is by changing that variant color here to change based on the category. So what I will do is I'll say, if category, see if category equals equals dot chores, yep, is ca if category equals dot chores, then you change this to green, yep. And if it's not chores, just keep it, I don't know, it was cyan, I think. Yeah, we can actually flare it up a little bit. So let's keep it to red. Let's look at that. So now it's also, yup, because chores here is not really matching with how I wrote chores here, which is absolutely awesome. Okay, good. So now it's like that. Okay, so this is a little bit of flair to it. Excuse me, this is not really the best kind of design, but it will work for now, I guess. Yeah, it's all right. So we can work with this. And uh, this is it for this lesson. I didn't want to make it too long. And in the next lesson, we will actually start um, working with um, dragging and dropping stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one.